there we go. And now, once I finish that, I end up getting I end up getting newsletter for territory over here. Okay. Now that looks that looks pretty good. So newsletter for such and such, such and such, such and such. All right. Now, what if I wanted to, you know, um, what if I wanted to add some text, some more text to it, or something else, just to sort of see this freeform functionality or whatever? And this will make the list point quite clear to you. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change this up just a little bit for some. For, for whatever else, and I'm going to put, in, instead of newsletter for or whatever else, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to put a full name instead. So I'm going to bring territory down, and then I'm going to put full name over here. So what's going to happen over here now is it's going to actually add a full name in this particular case, right? And you guys are going to see in just a moment that after I finish adding that full name over there, right? Um, um, after, I finish, after I finish adding the full name, and I'm sorry, I'm going to add it right after the territory, after I finish adding the full name, you're going to see the full names display for the individual territory. So let me bring this back up for just a moment. Hit territory. Let me bring territory back on one line again. It's better that way. Let me bring full name and let me show you what this looks like. So in central, I can see that the central region has Laura jo Lauren Johnson. The north region has Warren Powell. The south region has Fernando, Fernando Ross. Now, say that central would have had five people. Those five people would have appeared in there. Say that North, South would have had three people. Those three people would have appeared in there. Um, you name it. So what it does now is it actually takes the field and divides it by the group in the background for you. Pretty nifty and pretty handy if you look at it. Okay, this is awesome. Let's go a little bit further. All right, so we've added that part over there. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go ahead um, and add some more, some more properties in this particular case. And what I'm particularly looking for is I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, newsletter four, and now let me add a hello instead. So I'm going to hit enter. First, come over here, hit an enter, and then I'm going to put a hello, and then I'm going to make full name come on one line. So newsletter for hello, whosever name is there. Now, for that particular person who has a hello, I'm going to put a comma. Then what I'm going to do over here um, is I'm going to come back, and you guys will notice I've just slightly changed the instructions very, very slightly over here. Um, not much. But what I'm going to do over here now is inside of this inside of this text box, I'm going to insert some text that they gave me. So I'm going to come over here and add this text. And the main reason for this is you'll see how it lays out and watch how the text repeats for every single group. Because um, whenever you group, right, and you get the number of distinct values, you get the number of distinct, you know, you get the number of distinct list pages, right? At least the way we set it up where we said add page break after each and every single list. So what happens over here is this text right over here, right, is going to repeat, 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 repeat again and again and again, essentially. So let's actually see that in action. Now, real quick for hello full name, I'm going to change the formatting over here. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to text properties. I'm going to go to font right over there. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Usually the second line, by the way, in reporting is a best practice. You want the second line to be smaller font than the first line, and you also don't want it to be as bold as the first line or whatever, what's known as, what's known as prominent. So you make the second header not quite as big as the first header, much like you do in Word reports. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm going to make this 16 right over here, and then I'm going to make the color slate gray. 16, and then come back again with more slate gray. Whoops, there we go. And come back yet again and go down to slate gray and find it this long way rather than just type in the hexadecimal code and hit OK. And then hit OK. Excellent. So hello, full name. Bam, bam, right there. And you guys can see it's not as prominent or not as big as this is. OK. Now, once we actually get that done, here we go. So we're starting to get a little bit further. And what we're going to do next is make this text smaller, right? Your text is not as big as your headers anyway. And plus, we need the space. So we're going to come over here, highlight this text, right? And then what I'm going to do over here is I'm I'm going to go ahead now and alter it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and alter it another way using the font list rather than right clicking. So I'm going to come over to the font list over here and I'm going to change it this sort of way. And that's just to give you more experience with the actual interface, so to speak. Um, you guys see over here what I mean when I say there's ten ways to do every single thing in report um, in report builder. It really is, and it's just a matter of your preference. So on the font over here, I'm going to come back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, do is I'm going to go with Arial. Then I'm going to go with ten inches right over there. And then, as you guys can see, there's Arial right over there, and there's 10 inches right over here. So now what I've done is I've actually taken this, right, and I've made it 10 inches. And if I want to, I can check the color real quick. So go with the color, and I can make sure that it's black. There we go. And then once I'm done with that, voila, I've actually changed that. 
So very handy. That's how I changed all that font at one time, just like that, and gave it some black font. Now, once I'm finished with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some more information. So now I'm going to put congratulations on your total sales of, and now I get to choose what that of is going to be, right? So congratulations on your total sales of right after that. And then, um, and then what I'm going to do over here um, is I'm going to actually place the I'm going to actually place the sales field right after this. So I'm going to put the sales field in. So telling someone congratulations of your total sales. Now remember, it's looking at sales by territory. Thankfully for us, we had one member for each and every single territory, so that actually worked out, right? One member for every single territory, and we saw that earlier when I previewed it. Here, though, when I go congratulations of your total sales right over here, it's going to look at that particular member's total sales only. And it's real slick how territory is in the background doing all the grouping. Even though we don't see a territory column over here, it's doing it for us, right? So very, very nice to be able to see that. Okay. Now, what's happening over here is congratulations on your to total sales of right over there. And what we're going to do next is once we finish getting our, our total sales right over here, right, I'm going to highlight this right now. Make it, whoops, 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 there we go. Make it 16 inches. And then turn around and make it maroon. There. Congratulations on your total sales of whatever the sales is, right? And we understand over here that when we click on sales, let me just come show you this real quick. When I right click on sales, I'm going to click on expression. And what we want to do over here is rather than just show all the individual sales fields, let's sum them up. The reason why we can sum them up is because this is already being grouped. In order to run a sum or something like that, you have to have a grouping going on anyway. We're running a grouping by territory, so it's going to sum them up by the different territory values. So that sums all the different rows. Really handy. Wow. So you need to show users how to sum things up inside of a freeform list. This is another way to do it. And you guys can see that. So very, very nice. If you have any questions, definitely ask them, and, um, ask them you know, on the YouTube channel or whatever, and I'll answer them to make sure everyone's good. Okay, let's click OK. Now we've actually got a sum sales function in there. So we've actually built in that particular text, right? Now we've actually added the 16 inch right over there too. Um, now one more thing we want to do over here is we've got some sales actually highlighted. Wouldn't it be nice to give it a good currency? So we'll just click the currency right over here. There we go. And we just click the currency just like that and we've got it. Now it's starting to look a lot better. This is really coming along. But we've got this add title right over there, this text box. It wants us to delete that. Instead, this will function almost as our, as, our, as our newsletter over here. And then let's click Run and see what we've got. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Lauren Johnson's newsletter over there. You guys can see that, right? There's Warren Powell's newsletter right over there. And there's Fernando Ross. Each one is grouped for their separate territory. So we were able to group by territory without even displaying territory. Pretty cool. You guys have just learned something extremely important. You definitely want to go over this lab and catch all those points. All right. Now, we're, we've, we've learned a whole lot over here, but now you need to see more power with this. And some of the other power we can do is like, let's say that we need a table. And we want that table, of course, to be automatically grouped by territory. No problem. We're, anything within the list region is going to be grouped by territory. It will always be grouped by territory. Okay, that's excellent. All right, now the next thing we need to do though is we need to make sure that we do get the table going, right? So first I'm going to click insert over here because we're going to display a table over here where we can see more granular values or essentially of what's going on to kind of give us an idea of, oh, okay, look at that. These are some extra fields that lend to our analysis. So I'm going to click table and then I'm going to click table over here and then I'm going to click on table wizard. Now for the table wizard, here's what you want to do. If it's inside the list, select from the data set that used your list usually. Um, believe me, for overwhelmingly, that's the reason um, you'll want to do this usually. Overwhelm for overwhelming reasons most of the time um, for, the, for normal business practices. So select over there the same data set the list is using. Use it over there. That way, the grouping actually affects the table too. Click Next. Now, right off the bat, this is what we're going to do. We're going to add some columns, but what we're going to do over here is, what we're going to do over here is when we, when we actually choose to add this column, we're going to add them at the row level. Whenever we add things at the row level, right, be because groupings are already taking place on the list, we're not going to say row group or, or column group. We don't need to do that. 
Instead, we're just going to add these at the row level right over here, so we add them into values. Remember I talked about that in the matrix section where I talked about adding into values over there, okay? So here's what we end up doing. We come back over here, and now I'm going to add sales date. Then once I finish adding sales date, I'm going to add quantity. So we're starting to see some additional sections over here for our users or some additional information. And then I'm going to come back over there, and I'm going to add sales. And then what you guys will see over here is once I've actually got, I've got sales date quantity and sales, I'm also going to do, I'm also going to do something else too that's pretty neat. 